Hey everyone, my name is Zach. I'm a 23 year old competitive bowler from Canada, currently living in Montreal. Welcome back to the Comp Climb training series, where I record most of my training, provide in depth analysis of every session, and just chat about climbing with an emphasis on competition. So, we have a new competition to train for with the conclusion of the North American Cup in Salt Lake City. The next event to look forward to on the horizon is the North American Cup in Vail. So I've talked a lot about this in the previous episodes, but this is going to be the most important event of the year for me. I am very, very motivated, especially after getting just like sort of my competitive side ignited after making finals in Salt Lake. It it has given me an extra itch and I am no longer like kind of being fluffy about my goals. I have a very definite goal of winning Vale. And this next couple weeks of training that I've written is some of the most deliberate training I've written in a while. I'm gonna be doing a lots of different styles of training, very dedicated training to my weaknesses and a lot of things that I learned that I need to work on from uh, the Salt Lake event. And I'm gonna put like even more effort and like focused training in for the next few weeks and I'm going to do my absolute best to win in Vail because that is my goal and I'm very very motivated uh, to try my best. So with that said, uh, like I said, we have some new training. The, the program is going to switch up a bit. So we're going to do a bit of a program breakdown now. If you're not interested in the program breakdown, use the timestamps below to fast forward to our sessions. We're going to be climbing at Block Shop today. But let's have a look at this uh, new program, like our, our Vail North American Cup program. So basically, it has kind of has three different phases. So our first phase is going to be these first two weeks here. And then the second phase is after our four day rest week, we're going to do sort of a new phase with these two weeks here. And then we have one more phase basically with the week and a half leading up to the event. So the broad strokes of the phases are this phase, uh, this first phase is going to be slightly higher volume, just a little bit. We'll have like a little bit of a higher volume with our the reps of our hangs and pinch block, a little bit higher volume with the sets and reps of our workout, and then just the, the duration of our climbing sessions will be a bit longer. Um, so that's sort of the gist of the first training phase. And during this first training phase, we also have a local competition to attend. It is called the Myland Sen, and it's going to be taking place at um, Alley Up Myland. And so this is going to be a fun competition that I'm going to participate in. So the next training phase is about uh, two weeks long. And this training is going to have like a bit of everything. I'm a little bit worried at this point uh, that I am maybe being a bit optimistic about all the different kinds of training that I'm trying to fit into like a six day routine or sorry. Yeah, a six day routine. As you know, my training days are six weeks long. And usually for a training phase, I'll write like a routine that I do for six days. And this six day routine just repeats. Um, so basically these two weeks here are the exact same with one small exception. Just this uh, session here is different from this session here. And the reasoning behind that is I don't wanna do like a, a five on five off, which is what this session would be right after a rest week. So I'm just doing some slab uh, a slab session to sort of activate the body. But let's talk about this training phase, like this week, like these two weeks here. So let's take a look at the sort of core structure for the training week. It's gonna be quite interesting. Like I said, it's it's really jam packed. So the biggest thing is uh, the five on five off practice. So I really noticed a lot of rust in finals at the Salt Lake North American Cup. My tactics were really bad. And I think part that was partly because I didn't actually do enough mock competitions right before the Salt Lake event. And I actually had them planned in my program, but I kind of messed up and I planned them the, to planned to do them the week before the event. But the problem was we got, we obviously arrived in Salt Lake a week before the event and I had to adjust to the altitude. So trying to do a five on five off round after like traveling on a plane, exhausting travel and at altitude is a bit suboptimal. And I actually just decided to treat the few sessions that I had before the event as sort of activation sessions rather than performance sessions. So what I'm going to do differently here is, as you can see, we have a five on five off session here, five on five off session here and here. And these are all happening before we actually travel to Denver. So 
Yeah, I'll also quickly mention the, the what you do when you go to like the Vail North American Cup or the Vail World Cup is you go, you train in Denver for a little bit because it's also at altitude and it helps you acclimatize uh, because there's actually no gyms in Vail. So basically we're training, we're gonna train in Denver for like a week, a uh, week and a half. And then like we'll drive to Vail the day before. But anyway, I'm gonna be doing my performance training, like my five on five off practice before we go to Denver. So that way I don't get there. And then the same thing happens where I'm like, uh, trying to adjust to the altitude, which means I can't actually do my five on five, five on five off training, which means I won't have any performance training. So instead we're going to do it before we leave. So that's the logic there. And I think we have three, uh, five on five off rounds scheduled in the program, and that should be enough to really get some good practice in. And, uh, if I make sure they're like super good five on five off rounds, like I go and I find a gym with like really, really good boulders. That's how we're going to maximize these, th these three sessions and hopefully have a bit better tactics going into Vail. So let's continue looking at the six day week. Um, I guess this, so this session here is also the same as, uh, this training phase. I guess I should have probably talked about the first training phase first, but oh, well, we're doing them in a different order. But anyway, this is also something new that I am going to be doing in this training phase. And I think it was in the, Le in the LaCrux video that I mentioned that I was going to do this. Um, but basically it's been very consistent over the past couple months that my morning session is always feeling really bad in terms of physicality. I find I can't do the powerful boulders in the morning. And then I usually have like good power in my second session. And in previous years, this hasn't always been the case. It usually goes like 50, 50, whether or not I have power in the morning, but it's been so consistent the past couple months that I'm just going to start leaning into it and writing my training around this, uh, phenomenon. So basically here is like, not the best example. Let's take a look at the first training phase, like these couple weeks. So this is where I'm being really deliberate about it in the morning session. We're going to start, uh, just trying to stick to only slab and coordination based boulders. So boulders that are more movement intensive, where if I'm not having a lot of power or strength in the morning session, it's not going to matter because we're not going to be trying those kind of boulders. We're going to be doing lots of coordination and slab. And luckily these Montreal gyms are really good for this. Like basically I can go to any gym in Montreal and they're going to have enough slab and coordination boulders, uh, to support my whole session, which is really epic. Um, like that's the idea with the session. If there's a day where there's like one power boulder that I just want to try in the morning, it's okay if I stray from it a little bit. But the idea is to try and stick to this as much as possible. And then on the flip side of that, we're going to be basically doing all the power boulders in the second session and try not to do slab or like coordination boulders. And so this is why we have like a boulder max four session. It's about physical boulders, power boulders, strength boulders. And I'm going to make use of what is consistently my strongest feeling session throughout a week. You know, it's always day one session two. That's when I feel my strongest. So we're going to do the most strength based boulders possible. And obviously this is quite different from what I've been doing in the past where I just could have sort of scheduled these as boulder sessions and I can kind of do whatever I want in terms of that, in terms of bouldering and I get to pick my own style and whatnot. But the idea is to deliberately do not physical boulders in the morning and do physical boulders in the evening to make use of my power. So actually, you know what, let's, let's just talk about the first training phase before we go into the second phase. I shouldn't really be doing them out of order. Um, so this is the six day week for the first training phase. Uh, these both halves of the week are the same. So these first two days are the same as these first two days. So, yep. Like I said, we have slab coordination in the morning, day one, session one, just a nice activation session, do some movement. Then we got boulder max force in the evening, try and do all the power boulders when I'm feeling good. And then also what I'm going to be doing for this, uh, first training phase is I'm going to be doing all three of pinch block crimp hangs and sloper hangs. I haven't done sloper hangs in a bit, but I'm be, going to be bringing them back. So I think it's been a while since I've actually done all three grip trainings of mine in, in one training phase at the same time. But like, like I said, I'm so motivated for Vail. I want to like be doing everything possible while still being reasonable. So basically the reason pinch block is scheduled here right after the bouldering max force is just because doing hangs, slopers and pinch block all in the hangboard session can be quite tiring and exhausting and like mentally challenging to do. I find it's hard to tackle, uh, doing all of this grip training in the evening when I'm like tired, I want to just be done with the day. So I'm just, I just basically spread it out a bit and I'm doing my pinch block right after the strength session where my grip strength should be pretty activated at this point anyway. And, uh, it'll be good to make use of my strong feeling. And then 
what I'm gonna be doing uh, for this training program as well is having a free session on session one, day two. So I've actually sort of been doing this for the past couple of weeks, but I haven't outright said it because I was sort of just um, not being lazy, but I was talking about how if you wanna do things that are fun for you, this is like more valuable training than sort of maybe doing training that you're less motivated, motivated to do, even if it's written down on your program. I think optimizing for fun and enjoyment is very, very important for training. And you're gonna be trying harder uh, doing training that you're motivated to do, right? And this is like a pretty core philosophy of mine. So I'm actually just gonna lean into that and schedule a free session. So whatever I'm motivated to go do on this day is what I wanna do. Like let's say on this day one, there's like a bunch of bowlers I left unsent. Well, on this session, I get to go and try them again if I really want to. Let's say I have a day where I actually sent a lot of bowlers in the gym. Then maybe I go do campusing on this session uh, or like a kilter board session. I think I'm always going to try and prioritize campusing in this session because it's going to be very important to build up some power going into Veil vale and feel really, really strong. And campusing is really good for that. Um, but yeah, so prioritize campusing and then basically I can just go boulder or kilter if I want to either. Whatever I'm most motivated to do. So yeah, free session on, on this uh, thing here. And then our workout is going to be pretty similar to the workout in the previous uh, couple months of training that we were doing for Salt Lake with the addition of just a couple exercises. So the first one is going to be uh, calf raises. By the way, if for anyone who's new and doesn't know, I've got obviously the legend for all our exercises here. If you're curious about uh, what these abbreviations mean. But yeah, I haven't done calf raises in a long time. I was actually doing these a lot, I think right before I started the first comp climb series. And uh, these were really good. I think they... I found a bit more, like I leveled up my slab game a bit when I trained these for a couple months. I definitely felt more stability in my ankles and my calves and I sort of just got lazy. I don't know, I sort of forgot to keep training them. And it's an exercise that sort of went under my radar and I forgot about. But uh, yeah, I think <laughs> I could go on a tangent, a really long tangent here, but I'm gonna try not to. Basically, um, switching to the Timon Arasaki Pros, I've sort of mentioned how I needed to adopt a more traditional smearing technique. Whereas with the VSRs, I was using sort of my full foot technique. Um, but now that I'm using a more traditional smear and not a full foot position like I, like I liked to use in the VSRs, it's actually important for me to have stronger calves because uh, like the more traditional smear with like the straight on smear, you know, strong calves are good for that. And uh, like, especially on slab, it's important to have almost calf endurance as well because by the time you're doing sort of this no hands boulder and you get to the end of it, your calves are going to start pumping out and your ankles are going to be tired and you're not going to be able to balance as effectively. So it's important to build strong calves for this. I think I did a pretty good job at only briefly touching on that tangent, but it is actually something I was thinking a lot about. And that's the context behind me incorporating calf raises into this program. And then at the same time as well, I'm also going to be incorporating calf stretches and this is a similar similar logic for this as well. Um, not only do I want strong calves with this smearing technique, the more traditional smear, but I also want flexible calves so I can go really, really deep and get nice and uh, get a lot of uh, surface area and friction with the rubber on my shoes by really sinking low into my calves and they need to be flexible for that. So we're gonna be doing this in all of our workouts. Hang, our hangboard routine is going to be pretty similar to what we've been doing. Uh, the only new thing is the additional, or sorry, the addition of the slipper hangs, which I haven't done in a couple of months, but I think it's time to bring them back. Uh, I've just noticed, been noticing some slipper weaknesses recently, so let's train slippers. And then obviously our volume is going to be going back up since what we were doing right before the Salt Lake event while we were trying to peak. So instead of doing like the, the one rep of six sets, like we were doing previously, we're going to bump it up back to two reps, back up to five seconds and back up to five sets. So we're going to be doing some high volume as we as we are further away from the event and gradually cut down as we're trying to peak and increase uh, the load that we're trying to add to our hangs. And then another quick little thing I want to touch on. The reason that the pinch block is not at two reps, five seconds, like our other grip exercises is actually because I find if I do too much pinch block, the, the wood cuts up my thumb. So the reason I always try to keep it a bit lower volume with the pinch block because it actually really cuts up my thumb and gives me thumb splits. So that's the reason for that. And then, yeah, like I said, both halves of these weeks are the same as each other. And this six day routine would repeat in theory for the second week, 
but in reality, it's actually only the first half of the week that's the same because uh, of this competition that we're gonna be doing, and then the rest week starts there. But in theory, this week here would just loop for the remainder of this training phase. So, like I said, yep, we got our four day rest week, timed very deliberately, uh, sort of this far away from the comp. I find this gives me a good bit of recovery from the highish volume training that we did. And then it allows me to still get some other training that I want in right before the event. And then it also gives me my week and a half of taper. So I plan this out uh, very deliberately. So then, yeah, let's sort of revisit the second training phase, which is this week here and this week here. They are the same training week with the exception of this session. It's just different. So yeah, this, uh, this, this training phase, we have our mock comp practice that we're gonna be doing. And uh, oh man, there's a, uh, like another tangent I can go on, but I'm trying to keep this program breakdown brief. You know what, screw it. I think this is just not gonna be a, progr a brief program breakdown. This is gonna be a long one. So the reason, it actually kind of sucks. Like I don't wanna be doing five on five off in the morning session. Uh, for the reasoning of like, you know, I'm doing, I was doing my slab in the morning and then the bouldering max force in the evening because I usually don't feel super strong in the morning, right? And trying to train performance when we're not feeling at our strongest isn't necessarily most optimal, but there actually isn't a better place to put this. Um, like I, I can't put it on the second session of the day because usually when I train on this day, it's like peak hours of the gym, like the gyms are way busier in the afternoon and it, it sucks to try and do a five on five off when there's people, you know, in the way and I don't want to be a nuisance and really try and like, you know, be an asshole and say, hey, I got to do five minutes, like get out of my way. So I have to do it in the morning session. And like I had to program endurance in on the, it just, this is like the only session that I could do the mock comp in the morning of day one, session one, not the best, um, but I think I'll, I'll just have to make do with it. And we can just try and focus on the performance and the tactics. And even if I'm not feeling strong, it's okay. We'll just take our performance with a grain of salt, but I'll still try and do my best. So yeah. Day one, session one, uh, five on five off practice. And then this session is actually the same as the previous training phase. St we're still gonna do Boulder Max Force in the evening, in the afternoon, and then with our pinch block right after. And then this session is also very similar. We're still gonna be having our free session where I'm gonna be trying to prioritize campusing. But like I have mentioned previously, I'm gonna start training endurance. And I wanna do a few sessions of endurance, four in total, I think. One, two, three, four, yeah. Four sessions of endurance is sort of the perfect amount to give me just a bit of an edge going into Vail. And it's not necessarily because the roots in Vail are like long or something, usually when they set the boulders. It's, it's because altitude, it, it really pumps you out even on boulders that wouldn't normally pump you out and it really gets you out of breath, obviously. And so by the style of endurance that I train is basically just four by fours. Like we have reps four. So I pick a boulder, I do four reps on it back to back and I do three sets of that with four minutes rest in between. And so this is a good style of bouldering endurance training that I find actually trains my resistance. So it, it helps me not get pumped as easily. But when I do, when I rep out boulders back to back, it's also my source of cardio training. And I find even after four sessions, my cardio is like a lot better after, after these endurance training. So I'm basically timing this perfectly so that I have a bit more endurance and cardio on my side going into Vail. And the nice thing about endurance is that I find I build it quite fast. Like four sessions doesn't seem like a lot, but it's actually, I think it's gonna get me like really far in terms of my endurance. Usually three or four sessions is all it takes for me to notice like a bit of a level up. And I find I lose it quite slow. So by doing it this far out from an, from an event, it'll easily be maintained until Vail. So uh, yeah, we have endurance in addition on this program. And then the workout is the same um, as this first training phase, just like by this point, the volume is a bit reduced. I think it's like, you know, two sets instead of three that it was up top. And then same thing with hangs and slopers. Same thing, we're just doing, you know, one rep of our hangs, six sets instead of two reps and five sets that we were doing for the first couple weeks. So that is the second training phase. And then the third training phase is basically just like the taper. That This is just where we start cutting down the volume and making sure we're feeling nice and fresh, skin is healing. You know, we just did one of, one of these training phases. I don't really need to explain it too much. This is exactly the sort of thing we were doing in Salt Lake. And we're gonna even have like a bit more of a gradual taper than we did in Salt Lake, because this is the biggest peak of the entire year I'm trying to hit. Like I tried to hit a, a nice peak in Salt Lake, but basically all the marbles are here, right? This is it, North American Cup Vale, I wanna win it. So we're gonna do our best to feel as strong and good as good as I ever have in my life. That is the idea at least. 
So our sessions are all shorter, an hour. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about this training phase when we get to it, because I sort of, we just did this, um, you know? Like you see how we only are doing one set of our hangs, or sorry, one set of our workout and two reps. This is the exact workout that we did right before the Salt Lake. But now we have like an even extra peaking session. Like I sort of mentioned this, right? We're gonna be doing our one rep max test, like right before, kind of right before fail. Like really see, like see just how strong we are. And uh, yeah, just like same sort of thing with hangs, one rep, one, one set. And then by the last couple of days, we're only doing one session to get nice and nice and fresh. So there we go. That is the, uh, the Vail North American Cup training plan. Uh, that was not a, pro a brief breakdown, but I actually, like I said, this is the most sort of deliberate uh, training program that I've wrote. I really thought hard about it. I wanted, I wanted to maximize my condition as much as possible. I'm putting all my marbles on, on this competition. I really, really want to win it. Uh, it means a lot to me. So the training is going to be intense. It's actually not going to be too intense. Like the, it's not like we're doing crazy hard, high volume training, but it's going to be mentally intense because I'm going to try, I'm going to put all of my effort into it. I'm going to do my very best in every session and uh, try and like find a form that I've never been in before. So that is the idea. And that's why the training is super in depth. And I wanted to talk about all the little reasonings behind every session and every training. So with that being said, let's begin it. I'm very excited. I ha it's been a while since I've been this motiv motivated for a competition. Uh, so I hope it's coming through. So anyway, let's start off with our first session of the program, our slab and coordination session that we're gonna be doing at Block Shop. So here we are with our first session of the new program. Very exciting. So like I explained in the breakdown, the, okay, well, for those who didn't watch the breakdown, long story short is i'm going to be sort of focusing up my boulder sessions a little bit more than they were in the past and this the reason for this is because i usually feel stronger in my second session of the first day of training and i usually have less power in the morning so what we're going to do is we're going to sort of really lean into this uh, phenomenon and I'm gonna try and stick to slab and coordination style boulders in the morning session where my power levels aren't as needed for this kind of training. And then we're gonna do like the powerful strength-based boulders in the second session where I feel really strong and we may as well take advantage of this. So the idea is to stick to slab and coordination in the morning session and then power and strength boulders in the second session. So this morning session is our slab and coordination session. And I wanted to go to block shop because it's been a little while since we've been here, but it turns out that block shop wasn't the best gym for the slab and coordination session. I'm at the Hochalaga, look, okay. Why did I try to pronounce it uh, like that? Sorry, I, I don't have a good French accent. Uh, we're at the Hochalaga location of block shop and I'd actually heard that they just had like a mini slab competition or something. And there were one or two like really hard slabs, but they had been taken down by the time I got here for my session. So basically in this morning session, I kind of have to stretch the rules a little bit and I stray a little bit from the pure slab and coordination dedicated session. Now that being said, I still try to stick to boulders with an element of coordination or boulders that are like pretty vert. There weren't like a whole lot of dedicated slabs up in the gym, but there was a lot of vert climbing, which is pretty close to the idea. The idea is to just not try the most physical, most physically powerful boulders in the morning. So for example, this uh, boulder here we're trying obviously is quite coordination intensive. This boulder is actually perfect for this session. This is exactly uh, what we're looking for. Like this boulder is, it's a bit physically intense for sure, especially when we get up to this ending. Uh, these last couple holds I was feeling uh, not so stable on. Um, 
but even like with the morning rust, you know, my movement uh, pathways in my body are still able to work pretty effectively. So I was able to figure my way through this very, very cool triple clutch paddle thing. And then this bowler that we're moving on to here is uh, like a bit of where we're stretching the rules a little bit as well. So yes, it's got this uh, sort of double clutch move, which is, is quite coordination based, but this is mainly like a power bowler. Um, but yeah, like I said, we had to stretch the rules a bit in, in this morning session. And actually, so this is obviously the first day of training that I am having since we got back from Salt Lake City. And I actually had like uh, one sort of chill session after the comp in Salt Lake that I didn't film. Um, and then I had a couple more days of rest after that. And so that also, that was a, uh, that was a really intense fall. I had like so much pressure going on through like my biceps that it sort of ripped me back. And I was, I was really scared actually, as I was falling from, from that move. And luckily it didn't turn out too badly. Um, but yeah, anyway, I, I was, I was going into the session expecting to get wrecked or like, you know, to get toasted. I was running on like four hours of sleep from traveling home from Salt Lake. It was just like hard to sleep on the plane. And I got home at like 1am and on top of the fact that Hochelaga didn't have too many slabs up. I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be rough. And the session started off feeling really rough too. Uh, I, I, on the first couple boulders I did in the session, I probably felt like a five out of 10 in terms of strength. It was really bad. Um, but it, I had like a crazy phenomenon today where I started to feel a lot better really rapidly. Probably one of the most potent cases of this of this experience like obviously i just did that last red 11 which was quite physical and now we're we're working this boulder here which is is a vert boulder but it still turns out to be really powerful and i started to feel like a lot better really quickly as i was trying these boulders like i probably moved up to a seven maybe even like a seven and a half because there's no way I'm, I would have been sending that last red 11 out of 5 out of 10. So yeah, crazy effect where I started off feeling really garbage and then started to feel a lot better as the session went on. Um, and a uh, little spoiler, as we go into the second session of the day, I also feel like really good in the second session, which I am quite shocked by um, because like I said, I had a brutal travel day yesterday and I didn't get like any sleep. So I was very pleasantly surprised with our first day of training. And you know what it might be a little bit actually, um, what might be helping? So obviously we were just training in Salt Lake City, which is at elevation. It is at about 4,400 feet of elevation, which is pretty significant. And so now obviously we're coming back from that. So my cardio system and, you know, my, I've been breathing hard while we've been up there. I've sort of had to adapt to harder conditions, but now that I'm back at sea level, I think I, so if the travel like was taken out of consideration, I would probably be feeling like a superhero right now. Like I'd probably be feeling really, really good and fit, but then you just add on the intense travel and lack of sleep. I think what it does is it just neutralizes the superhero effects that I would have maybe obtained. So I think that's actually why I was feeling uh, pretty good in this day of training is because I had some extra oxygen in my system to work with basically. But you know what, I bet, um, at the time I'm recording this, I just finished this day of training. So I haven't actually gone and done the second day yet. Uh, we're going to be going and campusing here. I bet I'll be feeling it tomorrow. Like I bet I'll be feeling the lack of sleep from the day of travel in tomorrow's day of training. 
So we'll see how that turns out. But anyway, I was content with doing like a couple powerful boulders. Um, obviously, you know, we did that triple cut, sorry, triple clutch paddle boulder and the red uh, pinch double clutch in the steep. And yes, they, those were like coordination boulders, but they were quite powerful too. And so I decided to stop with the, the powerful stuff there and save it for, you know, the power session later in the day. There's definitely still more power boulders to go around in the gym. So we're gonna start moving on to some vert boulders. And we're actually going to be getting on maybe a few softer boulders that I usually wouldn't get on in my regular boulder sessions because with, uh, with more discipline and intention in this morning session, I have to sort of try my best to stick to a certain style of boulder, which means that I can't just project a really, really hard boulder in the morning session and in the afternoon session. So basically what it means is it is going to force me to go get on boulders that I wouldn't have normally got on. And for the most part, they're going to be softer boulders because, uh, you know, in the previous bouldering sessions, I would have just opted to project something hard, but now I have to meet the parameters of the style of session I'm looking for. So I'm getting on boulders like this, you know, maybe I wouldn't have gotten on this seven. Um, under normal circumstances, I would have gone and tried like one of the white tapes and probably done poorly on it because it's the morning session and I wouldn't be feeling power enough, powerful enough to go try like a powerful white tape. So instead, what I'm going to be doing is, like I said, going and getting on the style of boulder that I should be trying in this morning session, uh, trying to stick to as much revert and slab as possible. And that means we're going to be getting on these uh, moderates that we wouldn't have normally got on. And uh, there were a couple good examples of boulders that I'm glad that I tried. Like like this one here, it maybe seems a bit unsuspecting. Like, okay, this looks like kind of a casual seven, but even just this ending sequence here, it was pretty tricky. I felt like I could have fallen at any second. It didn't even, it didn't really look like that. I think it looked pretty, pretty casual, but it was like really tricky to match this finish hold and just little instances of of this of like finding a tricky move that you normally would have not tried because uh you know maybe i would have gone and tried something that was just hard um i would be missing out on these little tricky moves um that just surprise you from time to time so i'm r really really uh looking forward to continuing with this style of training and doing more dedicated styles of sessions. And I have done this a little bit in the past, but I found that you really have to have like a good gym setup in order to, to do something like this. Like I'm pretty fortunate to be in Montreal where, you know, there's just so many mega facilities in the city so many so many good bouldering facilities and not only are they good but it's it's just sort of like trendy in Montreal to set lots of different styles of boulders and not all cities in the world will do this like there might be cities uh, some cities that are really powerful powerfully focused or there might be some cities that are like like to just set vert a lot I found there were places in places in Germany, actually, that a lot of the gyms were just vert and there weren't so many powerful boulders. But basically, um, the moral of the story is there are so many gyms in Montreal that have such diverse styles of setting. And this, what this does is it allows me to have these dedicated style sessions. Like I can actually go to a gym and have enough slab and coordination boulders to last me a session. Um, whereas this was like really difficult to do back home in Toronto. Like it was hard to go to a gym and have enough slab boulders to do a whole session on. Like usually there would be like one or two slabs. 
and for the most part boulders would be powerful so i'm it's sort of now dawning on me that i should take advantage of these uh, montreal gyms and revisit this uh, dedicated style of training sessions and yeah it's like they also have enough powerful boulders in the gym to last me a whole session so it was really really good and i think that the morning session was successful like yes we sort of stretched the rules a little bit and maybe got on some of the powerful boulders that should have probably been done in this session but i think all the boulders we did had a nice element of coordination or at least pretty vert and we stuck to the theme of the session as much as possible and like i said we were sort of on hard mode uh, in the morning at block shop hochelaga just because they didn't have a lot of slab up and i think block shop in general is one of the more powerful gyms in montreal um which means that maybe it's a bit harder for the slab and coordination session but for the boulder max 4 session which we're doing here block shop is probably the best city in the gym for this right um so i was really looking forward to uh this max force boulder session so uh i guess i didn't talk about this boulder when we were trying it in the morning i was talking about something else but this nine honestly maybe was like the hardest boulder of the day for me <laughs> there's another boulder later that actually i struggle a bit more with but this was like a, a, a really hard nine. And I find at Hochelaga, there's usually like a nine up somewhere that is like in contention for the hardest boulder of the gym. And uh, usually it's just because it'll be anti-style or something really, really funky. But that nine took a lot of work and, uh, and figuring out beta. And it was a really, really good climb. I think it actually was V9 too. Like it was just really not my style and it was good for me to work on. So here we are moving on to a white tape. So like I've said a lot, white tapes are always such an epic uh, battle. And I love battling the white tapes at Block Shop because they're usually like the hardest bowlers in the whole city. But this one actually turns out to not be too, too bad. And this isn't the bowler I was talking about being harder than the blue nine. This one actually maybe felt easier for me than, than the blue nine, but I think this one maybe just suited me a bit more. And I found a bit of beta on this boulder actually that probably made it more doable for me. And it's the way I go up to this left hand, but I'll, I'll talk about that when we go and try the move again. But yeah, this boulder was super, super sick. Like a really cool mix of like technical and powerful uh styles in this boulder like it's definitely like belongs in the boulder max four session because it was super physically intense and especially on the grip in the first few moves but it was also like really hard uh with the footwork and uh it was very technical as well but yeah like this boulder looks like uh we should be like pulling on the start holds going left hand up to the pinch and then right hand out to like the really bad pinch and then maybe jump up left hand again. But you see, I find a way to match this left pinch and I'm sure, well, I doubt that this was by design, but basically I think it turned what would have been the crux of the boulder into a much more doable move and uh, made the boulder like, for me, not as hard as the blue nine, but it definitely is a harder boulder, but it was just funny. That blue nine was really hard for me. And this thing was a five star. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that, but this, this boulder was probably my favorite up in the, no, 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 actually the red 11 double clutch from the morning session was my favorite boulder in the gym. That thing was sick. That was a 10 star boulder. The, the yellow was also very cool. Uh, this boulder that we're trying here, actually, I think uh, for me uh, and my skill set, this boulder turns out to be the hardest one in the gym for me. Um, these holds are like really spicy and, and bad and anti-style. They're like the Technic line of like no shadow footholds called the tiptoes. And yeah, like little slopey crimp jibs is uh, definitely not my forte. And this second last hold is really quite bad as well. And it makes for a really hard finish move. 
But yeah, this boulder turns out to be the hardest one of the whole day of training for me. And another uh, reason I think that I was performing pretty well in these training sessions, even with the lack of sleep, is because I'm also still pretty peaked, you know? Like we hit that peak for Salt Lake City, um, a pretty sizable peak at that, and it lingers, right? So I'm still feeling the effects of like the, the peak that we hit for the competition. And I'm still like riding the momentum of doing a comp and doing lots of comp style bowlers. So my movement skills and patterns in my brain are like really, really fresh and activated. So I think all the factors of like, you know, being peaked, being like having really, really activated movement skills right now and coming down from altitude, I think all these factors actually overpowered like a brutal day of travel where I got up at like 4.45, slept for like an hour on the plane, arrived at 1 a.m. and then slept for like four hours. Um, all of those factors overpowered this and made for like a really good day of training. And we are finishing off the boulder sessions with this very cool V10 that I tried really hard to flash. I had like a foot slip where I would usually fall in training under that circumstance. But I said, no, I'm just not gonna let go. And I really wanna try and flash this boulder. You know, I'm like, uh, I'm in comp mode. We try to flash things. And so that was a, a fun little moment. And then, yeah, uh, like I said in the program breakdown, we're doing our pinch block right after the Boulder Max 4 session. And for those who didn't watch the program breakdown, the reasoning behind this is I'm gonna be doing all three types of grip training in this uh, training block. So it's just too long of a workout if I do them all at the same time. So I just spread it out a little bit between the sessions and uh, I'm doing my pinch block after this session just to spread out the training a bit. So yeah, like I said, at this time, I haven't gone and done my day two of training yet. So I will see you uh, in a second after I come back from tomorrow's day of training. So here I am back after concluding my second day of training. And we are about to begin our campus session the next day. And I was quite right in my guesstimate of the fact that I was most likely going to feel the effects of the poor sleep that I was experiencing and the intense travel on this day. And this is actually a stat that I remember hearing a while ago. And the more times I remember this stat and think about whether it's actually being applied to how I'm feeling, the more that I start to really believe it's true. I don't remember exactly where I heard it, but I guess um, in terms of athletic performance, it's actually more likely that you experience the adverse effects of a bad night's sleep um, two days after you get that night of sleep. So for example, I didn't feel super bad in training yesterday because it was the basically the day that happened right after the bad night of sleep and the hard day of travel. But in reality, that um, bad sleep is affecting today's day of training. And I'm actually feeling it like after a whole another night of sleep has already happened. And I actually had a pretty good night of sleep, like on the immediately before this training session. Um, but yeah, like the, this has happened to me a lot in, in the past. And I, I think this stat is probably pretty accurate, um, even just based on my personal experience, that you can actually expect to feel like a bad night's sleep um, in your training a couple days after it actually happens. And so this session, I was probably feeling like a four out of 10 in terms of strength. As you can see, I'm like barely able to pull on the wall on any of these boulders and I just feel terrible and it doesn't feel random. Like sometimes I can just tell that I'll randomly be feeling bad on any given training day, but 
I felt weak in my grip and I also just felt really low energy, which is obviously what you can expect from, uh, you know, not sleeping well is to be feeling low energy. So it definitely didn't feel like random garbage feeling. It makes a lot of sense uh, based on what was happening in the previous few days. So I end up calling the campus session super short. Um, I think I, you know, messed around for like 15 minutes, barely being able to pull on the wall. And actually after finishing this day of training, I kind of regret cutting the campus session a bit short. And what I should have done instead was not try my previous campus projects like I was trying to. And I should have just made up some new, like super easy to moderate boulders and just repped out a 45 minute campus session. I think it's actually, it, it's more important for me to focus on really getting going on this new program and getting my campus movement uh, nice and, and feeling primed again. So actually, like normally I'm all for cutting training short if you feel super bad, uh, just because it's important to like really feel like you're in control of yourself. And I leave the gym early lots from training and just ditch it. Like we kind of did this recently with the day of training that happened at Rose Block. But I'm in like super try hard mode right now. Like I have been saying, all my focus is on Veil and I'm trying to, like I want to maximize every single session. And this is me off to kind of a shaky start in that regard, right? Literally earlier in the video, I just get through saying how I want to maximize every session. Well, I didn't really do that on this campus session. I could have optimized by just sticking to easy to moderate boulders for 45 minutes rather than like failing on my old projects. So honestly, this campus session was a good kick in the butt to say, okay, don't do that again. You know, don't half fast the training sessions. I want to try and optimize in every single way that I can, because I want to be going into veil, feeling like there was nothing else different I could have done in terms of preparation. So I got my half ass training out of the way right off the bat, and we're going to be better going forward, I guess is the moral of the story. So anyway, immediately after our campus session, we are doing our workout. And as you can see, here I am doing a new exercise. Um, I think to the comp climb series in general, I was talking about in the program breakdown that I've done these weighted calf raises a lot in the past, but I actually stopped training them like right before I started the first comp climb series. I just sort of wanted to mix up the exercises a bit. I kind of forgot about them for a while, but this is a really good exercise I find um, to train to improve your slab skills. And here you can see I'm also doing my calf stretches, which is like a good complementary exercise for the same reason. And obviously slab climbing is all about balance, right? And in order to balance more effectively, it helps to have a really stable and strong platform. And that platform is usually your ankles, right? Um, so to have like nice, strong and stable ankles and calves, I find that it just helps, helps especially translate to standing on small footholds. Like it's a bit less important to have strong calves I find on the volumes, but on the footholds is where the strong calves like really, really uh, come into play and help you balance more effectively. And actually the calf stretches I find are what helps with the volumes um, in regards to slab because with more flexible calves, you're able to sink really, really low into your calves and get more surface area with your shoe and get more rubber in contact with the volume, thus creating more friction. So I find calf raises and calf stretches are two really, really effective exercises to um, become a more well-rounded slab climber. If you find that slab is a weakness of yours, I would definitely recommend these two exercises to be incorporated in your workouts. And so to conclude the day of training, we drove on over to Rose Block. I had to pick up some new Rose Block swag as you, as you can see. We got some new, some shirts and some other gear. 
And so I did my hangboard and slippers at Rose Block. And I just usually when I start my crimps and slopes after not doing them for a while, or like on the start of a new program, 80 pounds is usually like my introduction weight. So I did 80 pounds for my crimps and 80 pounds for my slopers and felt like pretty decent. I was expecting crimps to be feeling a little bit worse, especially after the morning, but that is the nature of double sessions sometimes and session two can be completely different than session one and I felt pretty strong actually for the crimp workout. So there are the first couple days of training in the books. I'm super, super motivated. Uh, it feels nice to have broken the seal of training and I'm just gonna put all my effort into these next couple months of training for Vale. So I will see you for the next couple of days of training. I think we'll go to the other location of Block Shop, Block Shop Chabonel, uh, for some more epic training. So look forward to that. <clears throat> Insert catchy video to here.